Hello, thank you for the invitation today. My name is Colleen Riley and I lead our global innovation and development teams at Terumo BCT. We are responsible for all the new innovations, product development, clinical, scientific, and software engineering. And I will tell you that this is my first uh, MESA meeting, so happy to be able to join. There's lots of excitement in the cell and gene market right now. It's very resilient even in the face of COVID-19. If we look, we raised 10.7 billion in the first half. That's 120% increase in funding. There are several robust pipelines targeting hundreds of diseases, 1,078 clinical trials, as you can see, with an ongoing year over year 24% increase. We look at advanced late stage products making it to market, Novartis's gene therapy receiving FDA, EMA, and Japan's PMDA, really a global gene therapy. Kite received its second CAR T drug approval to CARDIS for its mantle cell lymphoma. The field is growing and at a rapid pace, and because of that, we need regulatory to be prepared and aligned with industry. You can see where the FDA is involved and, exp and helping to expedite CGT approvals to reach more patients quickly. So let's talk a little bit about what we do here and what we see for our innovation and what we're envisioning the future. The manufacturing continuum will look different to each of you. And between the multiple pipelines, you may all be developing as well. If you think about this one in the autologous uh, wheel here, it's really bedside to bedside of personalized medicine. So our philosophy has been, we have to be integratable. We want to be able to come in in a modular fashion in all the areas that you need it. But we don't want to have one system where you have to use every single module of ours. So what gives us the right to play in this space? And, and for those of you who don't know Terumo, what is our history? So we're a, a company that has 50 years of blood expertise. Um, we've been continuing to evolve and remain relevant and lead uh, standardization. If you look at our, our blood transfusion area, we started automating blood processes, including washing and separation of blood components with our devices. This market is now mature and very standardized and blood centers run like clock, clockwork with automated technologies. We do work to continuously improve and innovate on solutions to help streamline the processes in this space. And if you'll see the Rebios device is really um, adding another sense of automation to these processes. That brings us over to apheresis. We brought in this expertise um, in 1987 Stem cell transplants are standard of care procedures prescribed by physicians around the world. Understanding the needs of the field through physicians and healthcare providers, we were able to introduce the Spectra Optia system. And as we take all of this knowledge and we move it over to cell and gene therapy, just for a, a, a fun fact here, 80% of cell collections for autologous cell therapy using leukapheresis are performed with our Optia system. So as we move into cell and gene therapy, we take our knowledge in manufacturing processes with these complex gene modification and ex vivo expansion in our quantum. So we continue to remain confident that our experience in standardizing and streamlining these processes will help in cell and gene therapy and get products to market more quickly. So let's just talk a moment about what is needed for this commercialization or the ability to get products to, quick, to market more quickly. First, scale. Currently in the near future, commercial success of these autologous therapies will drive the cell and gene therapy market. This requires scaling out capabilities and potentially regionally decentralized manufacturing strategies. With the growth of allogeneic off-the-shelf therapies, we will require, require a scale-up options. Both of these will require modular units, as we discussed. If we move to flexibility, the manufacturing process um, employed to attain, for example, gene-modified cell therapy may need multiple tweaking to optimize. 
the ability to optimize your processes through flexible unit operations as you understand the implications of these, par of these parameters is important. Ability to modify processes to account for variable starting materials and autologous product manufacturing, multiple pipelines, and processes. Next, we focus on connectivity. You know, as production scales, there's a need to control and configure multiple devices at one time. The ease of having one platform to control different units of operation during the manufacturing process. And data, we'll talk more ab about that continuing, but a bit around analytics to understand your critical parameters and translate that into optimization. You need inline sampling and real-time feedback to correct the processes. Insights for standardization, optimization, and control, and documentation is necessary for your audit and compliance needs. So moving through that, let's talk then about what we're doing in the cell therapy um, area. Specifically, let's start with talking about how we launched the Quantum, which is a perfusion-based hollow fiber reactor launched in 2011. And we, we launched this during the time when the market was in its infancy, and we've seen tremendous amount of change and evolution. Our customers have been able to develop multiple cell types and applications on their quantum, and a number have advanced the quantum to be used in their clinical production, which also helps increase productivity and reduces cost. Some of the applications um, are pluripotent cells, stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, endothelial cells, CAR T cells, and regulatory T cells exosome and viral vector production. The cell care applications of these membrane-based technology has been captured in multiple publications. And we're really excited to report in July 2020 from our lab, we had the expansion uh, results of human, of regulatory human T cells in our quantum system. So our, our platform is ready for um, a, a scale out model and for evolving allogenic therapies. And so we're developing capabilities in those capabilities in our platform. So if you think our current product right now um, is in the middle here, um, we are going up and going down. So what does that mean to you? That, let me frame what the 10X in here means for the scale up. If you think about it, 10X means our current platform provides 21,000 centimeters squared of surface area for adherent cell manufacturing with typical MSC yields of about 3 million to a billion cells. Given the perfusion nature of our bioreactors for suspension cells, we are now showing that we are capable of producing up to 25 billion T cells in a working volume of 147 milliliters. If you, if you take that perspective on the scale upside, we also know that we need a smaller reactor for when you're starting out, less cost in the disposable um, ways of using and areas that um, you could start with your cell production. You can scale up all using the same entire platform. So let's talk a little bit more about how we're, um, tackling all of these areas of, of the cell manufacturing process. We were previously focused on expansion and upstream. And as we've seen, the market has been able to produce large batches. Um, as the upstream processes have improved and you get larger batches, you start to face bottleneck um, in the downstream process. So the first four product we have in this area has been the uh, fill and finish by Finia. And it automates the last uh, step of cell manufacturing process. And th this is the most valuable um, stage for you. So there is a real need to reduce risk at this stage through an automation and a closed system. This new technology also facilitates GMP compliance and controls multiple de devices through uh, server-based applications in the system. So if you think about our CPA system, this is really the, the the application behind all of what we're doing. And again, what's, what will be new and what is new, we are developing a next generation of cell processing systems that will enable automation of multiple processes. And we know these need to include wash and concentrate capabilities. As we, we've talked a lot about equipment, we've really touched um, a bit on data, um, but as you, 
no data is the new oil and we have a menu or we have a software expertise in-house we have about 200 software engineers who are helping to write programs to help us get data from our machines that will help you optimize your collection protocols and standardization across multiple sites we also understand that these that these processes need also a regulatory or or a compliance strategy along with them so we're providing validation packages to help communicate your process stability take the paperwork off of your hands and so you can focus really on high value uh, priorities so what does all of this mean if you think about the future um, areas of this new areas we have to be ready for this I came from an area where there was new advances in additive manufacturing. When you sit down and you look at around the world, when you bring these new therapies, we need to develop our workforce to be able to handle them. So we're looking at talent development programs where we're working with universities to bring students in or to help influence um, lectures and training programs so we have a workforce for the future. We also have to invest in reference centers and collections globally. We have to share our knowledge and increase our knowledge base for everyone. So we work with Cognitive USA, Celtic Cure in Europe, Unicar in China. The other thing that we also need is to, to fund research grants to enable budding researchers in cell and gene therapy field to be able to start their experimentation. One such program we've worked with is Advanced Therapy Manufacturing and Innovation Grant for 2020 for Asia Pacific. And another area is we have to, we have to do the work and provide a voice in standardization by being part of the ACEL work stream and ARM and pushing for standardization and labeling of ACEL materials and start with more to come in our welding procedures and our different connectivity platforms. With that, I want to thank you for allowing me to share a bit about Terimo, where we've been, and where we see the future. Many of us will be participating in this meeting, so please feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you very much.